Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. So, I hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving. And did we get into Carbone? No, we did not. We did not get into Carbone. In fact, we took our red eye flight and we landed in New York. And we had a very tight schedule. I got to see a lot of my friends. It was just fabulous. Saw a friend of the show, Aditya, at his party at Dorian's. Hot friend Sheets, Neil, Dr. Nancy, the whole crew. My husband was there. It was just fabulous. Such a wonderful time. We were literally there for eight hours. But we're meeting all these friends. And then at 4 p.m., I'm like, you know, let me check my email. Because there was no reservations at Carbone. We ended up going to a lovely restaurant called La Industrie. It's the hottest pizza right now from Brooklyn. And they just opened a location in the West Village. And it was delicious. I wish I had had the dessert. But when I travel, I'm kind of nervous about getting migraines and sugar is kind of a trigger for me. So I really wanted to try the Bombali, which is an Italian stuffed donut. It's like stuffed with tons of cream and the olive oil cake. But, you know, we were traveling and I just didn't want to take the risk. But we check our email shortly after having lunch and visiting a friend. And I see an email from Resi, which is the app, the platform that a lot of these hard to get into restaurants use. And I see an email at 6.30 a.m. Okay, your girl was in flight. Okay, like no one's checking their email. And it's a hot seat alert. I didn't even know they did this. It's a hot seat alert. And apparently we could have had a reservation at noon. Hot seat alert. There was an opening at noon. Who the fuck is checking their email at 6.30 a.m.? Mind you, I was on a plane mid-flight. Like, who's checking? Like, I didn't get a notification, a text, like nothing. So we could have gotten into Carbone, but yours truly was not checking her email in flight at 6.30 a.m., which is when I got the alert because I looked at the time. And by now, it's 4 p.m. We've had lunch. We've visited some friends. And then I look at the Resi app, and I see there's an American Express members club with Resi, and they reserve seats for American Express holders. Now, a lot of you may not know, but I like to use a debit card. I only have one credit card. I've had one credit card my entire life. And I just don't like credit cards. It's just not for me. I like to use my debit cards. I know credit is good, but it's just not for me. Like I'd be buying Birkins left and right if I had a credit card. I do have a credit card, but I don't really use it. It's for emergencies. And my parents are in India. And so, of course, I message my parents because they're boomers and they have like multiple Amexes. Like they have all of them, right? Like every level. And so I'm WhatsApping my dad. By the way, I'm nearing 40 and this is the shit I'm pulling. Messaging my dad in India. It's probably like 3 a.m., but my dad is that dad, like, he answers. If you're going to need someone to save you, and you're on a deserted island or something, and you've got one phone call or that phone a friend call, that's my dad. Like, he's going to answer. Everyone else, like my mom, my mom's screening her calls. Like, she's purposefully avoiding me and many other people. So... I messaged my dad on WhatsApp, and of course, within minutes, he sends me a photo of his Amex, and I register again the Amex on Resi, but that didn't do anything. I guess there wasn't any available seating at 
Carbone and we didn't get to go. And, you know, who knows? Maybe in 2024, God willing, we'll end up there. I still want to go to Carbone. I don't care. I still want to go. I wish I had known that Resi had these alerts, hot seat alerts, where they tell you if there's an opening. But, you know, if you're telling me that there's an opening for noon at 6.30 a.m., and obviously it's me, so I'm in a plane, your girl's not catching it, you know? Miss the boat on that one. You snooze, you lose. What are you going to do? We had a lovely time, though, and... I was supposed to rain and pour and just be dreadful, but I don't know. It was like the sun gods came out and we just had the best day ever. It was a little rushed. Would have loved to have spent more time with each friend. We really love seeing our friends there. And it's basically my old life, right? Like, it's like part of my past, you know, it was my home for seven years. But, uh, I do think the situation in New York, you know, it it does need to improve. It, it's not what it was. I do think I lived in New York in the glory days, like 2011 to 2018. And then again, it was there in 2021, all of 2021, and it was good. But uh, those early 2000s and uh, the decades, right, the 10s, like those were incredible years. And the city's just not quite there yet. You know, it still hasn't recovered from the pandemic. But I love going there, had the best time with my husband and all my friends. And then we made our way to Dallas, had Thanksgiving with the in-laws, it was chill, it was great. Four days, four days was enough. You know, they're great. No one's mean. I don't have like mean in-laws. They're actually very kind and loving. They just want to feed you. And that's with every brown home or immigrant home. You know, it's just like food overload. And by day four, you're like rolling out of there. And, you know, my husband was fat shamed, you know, and that's, that's life in an immigrant home. I say it all the time in my comedy shows, like they're going to fat shame you and then feed you, you know, they're going to ask you like, what's going on? Like, what have you been eating? You've gained some pounds. And then they're going to like, sit you down at a table, handcuff you in front of a lazy Susan with like 18 courses and be offended if you don't eat anything. And so we came back to Scottsdale for literally 72 hours. And now I'm heading to London, heading to London tomorrow, Friday, super excited, but also extremely nervous because it's my first time performing internationally. I can't even believe this has happened. I've been in touch with the Soho Theater since June. And the fact that I've been able to create a TV show, get it on air, pitch it, you know, get it on air, and then have a comedy tour, tour the entire United States, and now perform two shows, one of which is completely sold out, and the second one, which is like 75% sold, all by myself without a manager or an agent. I I really do think if you put your mind to something, it can happen. If if anyone's going to be a testament for it, it's me, guys. Okay? I, I found the husband of my dreams. And we're just getting started. Everything happened later in life. If you've listened to the pod since day one, you know, like we, we've been there. We've been in the trenches. I'm still in the trenches, quite frankly. I'm just not in the trenches mentally. I'm just waiting for the physical, the 3D to catch up with where I am mentally. Cause mentally, I'm Taylor Swift in the Eras tour. Like that's where I am in my head, you know? And so I'm like, okay, time to catch up. Like universe, hello. And I just can't believe it. I'm I'm super grateful for all of these opportunities, but I I can be the first to tell you no one's really helped me. Obviously, being on a Bravo TV show is the reason for everything that's come my way. 
But even getting on Bravo, it was literally just like me. And of course, Vishal, like my castmate and friend, like we're just two kids with a pipe dream, I say. And then the rest of it, like there's been a lot of gatekeeping and somehow I've gotten to this place and I still have a long way to go. And I'd get to where I want to be much faster if I did have a talent agent or a manager, but I just haven't found the right one. It's plain and simple, you know? And like I've said in different podcasts with Aditya, unless you're bringing value into my life, a return on my investment in you, it's a two-way street because we've already got our established friends at this age. Like you need to bring something to the table at this point. I don't need a, I don't need a talent agent or a manager unless they're going to take me to the next level. And I haven't found that person yet. I have met with a lot of people that, you know, say they can help me, but you know, I'm following my gut. If it's not it, it's not it. If you're not the one, you're not the one. We're, we're keeping it moving. That's the energy. We're not climbing uphill. We're not forcing things. We're not trying to make things work for the third or fifth time, which has been my past. I've tried to do things over and over. They haven't worked. And now I'm just moving on. If they don't work the first time, I just move on. A, B, P, always be pivoting. So we're going to London. Got upgraded. Thank God. And I'm just grateful for that too. You know, just being able to get upgraded. And everyone talks about, you know, the points and what they're doing and the cards and the memberships and the bonuses and the points guy. And it's like, I have a lot of fucking points. And so does my husband. If anyone has points, it's us. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I have not found a deal or flight times that have been worth splurging all the points for. Like the points just haven't come through. We've been using the points for hotels and other things and these fluke upgrades that we get. But when we actually want to book something with points, it's never worked out. So I don't, I don't know all these TikTokers and Instagrammers and everyone on social media, even the points guy, like the points never work, hon. Like they, they never work out. I don't know if you guys are listening and use your points and have figured it out, crack the case, crack the code, the points code, hook a sister up because I don't know what you guys are doing. Cause I have all the points in the world and then I want to go to Japan. And the only timing available is like eight layovers and it's a Tuesday. Like I, I don't understand. Like it's never worked out. And yeah, we're racking up the points cause we keep traveling, but we're, we're using them for other things like hotels and stuff. Like I've never been upgraded or been able to buy a business class ticket. Like when we do find the times, it's like, oh, three million points one way. Like just ridiculous. Like at that point with that kind of money, I'd rather fly private. I'm not there yet in life, but that is my goal. My goal and dream in life is to fly private and have a, have a chef. Like I would, I would be over the moon. Who wouldn't be, right? Like, those are just obvious statements. Like, yeah, who wouldn't be? I do have a fear, though, of flying little planes. Like, I would probably fly domestic, private, and then internationally. Like, you'd catch me, you know, catch me on AA flagship or Delta first class, you know? Keep it real with you. But flying's tough, you know? Like, a lot of these flights, you know, these domestic flights, because international, if you're upgraded, you're like in business or first, you're like literally in your own little cubby hole. Like no one's really bothering you. But when I'm flying domestic, which is the majority of the time, it's hit or miss. Because a lot of these planes, like they don't even have a first class. Like even if you're upgraded, you're like, you're still next to like Joe Schmo, who's like picking his nose. Like, I don't know. I, I just think we need to talk about airplane etiquette. You know, it's a whole, it's a whole 
novel, right? We could write a book. It would be a bestseller on airplane stories, airplane terrors, on not like planes that crashed, but like the shit you see people do on airplanes. Like I should write that book, like currently cringing, flight edition. Like, let's start with the obvious, okay? Reclining seats and armrests. Leg room. I don't know why these seats, or whoever the fuck's making these seats, you have the audacity to even have a recline option. Like, I'm a tall girly, okay? But I'm tiny, okay? Call me Bob, okay? Bag of bones, okay? Let's call it what it is. My IBS, eating like ice cubes for breakfast. Like, I'm thin. It is what it is. Uh, I change my diet. If you've listened to the pod for a while, you know I'm crunchy granola, eating like plants. Like, I'm a bag of bones, and that's okay. Due to no choice. I'm a tall girly. Why do you have the recline button in coach? You have, no one has any business reclining, okay? I don't know why they have that button there. And me and Aditya, friend of the show, we can argue about this for hours because he re- he's a recliner. And after doing a like, kind of a poll with our friends, I came to the conclusion like dudes recline, like guys recline, and women generally don't. Maybe it's because we're mindful or we don't give a shit, but like, and and if you're a recliner, like, shame on you. Like, I don't know why people recline. I think it's unnecessary. And as it is, you know, we look like folded pretzels. Like, we we don't need to recline. That If you're going to recline, then don't even put the table thing there. The table thing. Because then it's in my neck, okay? My neck's going to get cut with the table thing. I don't even know the name for it right now. Armrests. I know there are people, we're all different shapes and sizes, but put the armrest down. Like, I don't want to be touching you. The armrest is a form of like, don't touch me. It's a barrier. I can't stand when I get to a seat. And the armrests are up. You know, I put them back down. I don't care. Obviously, if there's an issue and, you know, it's not possible for it to go down, I get it. But for the most part, an armrest, like, if it's up, like, we're too close for comfort. Then there's people that hog the armrests, like the audacity, like to use both of them. You you get one. You pick one armrest, okay? You pick one so that the other people in your row get to have one too. Windows. Don't even get me started on windows. As a skin girly, geriatric millennial who is only concerned with my skin and aging because I'm ageless, Close the fucking window. I get it. You got to read a book. That's why we have lights. If the entire plane is pitch black, leave your window closed. We don't need to see the ray of light. Okay? It's like the Madonna video coming back to life. Like, we're good. We're good. When you're the only one doing it, like, the audacity. Again. like. Close your fucking window. Footwear. Unless you're wearing socks, leave your shoes on. Most of you out there, I've been on a lot of flights this year, and I don't know what it is with 2023, but it was the year of smelly feet. Like, I don't know what's going on out there. A lot of you, your feet fucking smell. I can smell it from like three rows front and back. It's so bad. I'm 
wearing my jacket in reverse so I can cover my head with my hood, with my hoodie. Like, I, I can't tell you how disgusting these smells are that I've had the misfortune of sniffing. If you have smelly feet, and y'all know you have smelly feet, keep your shoes on, hon. Keep them on. Public service announcement. You know? And if you're not wearing socks, keep keep your shoes on. We don't want to see your feet. I've had people put their feet like right on me. Like I, I really don't understand what's going on in these planes. Like I don't think that etiquette's been this bad. And bringing food on a plane, you know, like I think the worst thing I've brought on a plane is Thai food. But some of you, whatever you're bringing, like it smells like Subway. Need I say more? Okay, we all know what Subway smells like. Okay? Smells like the back of a taxi cab or a really sweaty Indian wedding. Okay? Keeping it real. Some of our people smell. It is what it is. Like, guys, like, bring in, bring in something that has a palatable, palpable odor. Okay? Yogurt. And this used to be my pet peeve even when I worked in an office, like when people would bring yogurt. Like, you realize yogurt smells like vomit. Like, just be mindful of what you're bringing from outside to eat on the plane, you know? And I could go on, but, like, I'm going to end with the people that are watching movies or their social media with the volume up. Like, no headphones. Like, okay, you guys are serial killers. What's with that? The rest of us, we don't want to know what you're watching. Like, why do you need to put it on blast? Or why not wear headphones? Like, I really don't understand. The fact that I even have to discuss this, it's it's absurd and mind-blowing. But the things I've experienced in the past three years of flying nonstop, you know, I should write a book. But I am looking forward to flying to London, but I also have some friends coming to this show, you know, some important BFFs and... Oh, I, I'm nervous. You know, you want to make your friends proud. You don't want to bomb. And it doesn't get old. Like I've said, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm waiting for the day that, you know, the edge comes off. But, you know, I, your girls, your girls kind of freaking out. And it's it is easy to say it's going to be okay. But nothing prepares you for that moment you get on stage. And I really, really just... I just want to make my friends proud and I want it to go well. It's a, it's a big deal. It's prestigious to perform at the Soho Theater. I'm so lucky to even have this opportunity. And you know, God willing, you know, it goes well. You know, I'll see you on the other side. I'll, I'll tell you how it goes in London. We have a very fun trip planned and it's, it's tough because, yes, it is a work trip. But I also want to have fun in London, but I also have too much anxiety leading up to a show. And I want to eat, but then I have my IBS. And when I'm nervous, I shit my pants. And, you know, it's a whole, like, I want to have fun, but I have to perform and be in tip-top shape. And so it'll be interesting. And we're spending so much money to go all the way there. You know, you, you do want to have some sort of a good time. You know, we're going all the way. But uh, the show is the priority, but we're going to try and make the best of it and enjoy. And I, I want to get to the point where like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm on stage. But I don't think that ever goes away. And I've listened to the greats and, you know, I've, I've heard the, the nerves are just, they're just there. It is what it is. And in true London fashion, it's frigid, it's supposed to be raining. But again, I hope the sun gods you know, grace us again, just like they did in New York. And I'm at that point in life, like, uh, if it's cold, like, I really don't want to be outside, you know, and I love getting steps in wherever I am. And so it's kind of a bummer. I'd love to 
walk around London and see all the dis- the Christmas decorations, but I can't walk around in frigid temperature and rain. You know, it's like pick one. You know, if it's raining, we're staying inside, but if it's cold, like we can make do. We can try to be out a little bit and get some steps in, but if it's cold and raining, like forget it. You lost me. Those days where I'd wear fashionable coats and chunky boots, those days are gone. Okay, your girl needs a puffer down jacket. Like, I need to be warm. My bones hurt. And it's not because I'm old or older. I'm actually in pretty good shape and I'm young at heart. But my bones have always hurt in the cold. And it's just getting a little worse as I get older. But uh, I really can't tolerate, you know, frigid weather anymore. Like, there's cold and then there's, like, icicles, you know? But again, as usual, it's it's 1 a.m. and I've got a pack. I'm heading to London for a week. I'm so excited, scared, nervous, grateful, like all the emotions, you know. I wish my parents would come, but they're in India and they wanted to come, but they're on a big trip visiting relatives. And it's just like a surreal, surreal life moment that's happening. This whole year has been quite surreal. Have I seen a big benefit from doing all of this yet? No. But I guess the benefit right now is making people laugh and that brings me joy. But uh, I I would say I deserve more. I deserve more. I'm definitely underrated. And I'm at a place in my life where I can say that. You know, the podcast is underrated. Everything I've done is underrated. I feel family karma was underrated. Like it's, to me, ahead of its time. It's truly a great show. And I think we should have had a million viewers, you know. We gave something fresh, something new, something real to the audience. I do believe that. And I think it's time will come. I think it's going to be a cult hit for years to come. And we're just too early. But I'm looking forward to London. And after London, you know, I will get a break and we will be spending Christmas in Miami Everyone's coming together, my brother, my sister, and I just can't wait to go home. You know, there's no place like home, and home for me is my parents' house, you know? I've lived there most of my life, and me and my husband, were kind of in this limbo. This isn't our permanent home, and so once we have our permanent home, then I'll feel like, okay, I have a home. But right now, we're just kind of nomads, uh, just living out of suitcases. And I can't wait for that time in my life either. I'm not there yet. And I told you that in the last podcast, you know, my dream, of course, outside of having a private jet and a chef, you know, I'd love to have a home of my own, a home that I can call my own, where it feels like home and, you know, to begin that phase of my life. I'm not there yet. And again, things haven't happened when I've wanted them to, but We remain grateful. We have so much to be grateful for. Thank you for listening. I love you guys.